bring you the thrilling adventures of The Shadow, the hard and relentless fight of one man against the forces of evil. These dramatizations are designed to demonstrate forcibly to old and young alike that crime does not pay. The shadow who aids the forces of law and order is in reality Lamont Cranston, wealthy young man of our town. Several years ago in the Orient, Cranston learnt a strange and mysterious secret. The hypnotic power to cloud men's minds so that they cannot see him. Cranston's friend and companion, the lovely Margot Lane, is the only person who knows to whom the voice of the invisible shadow belongs. Today we feature the shadow in an adventure out of this world. Early morning. The scene, Lamont Cranston's flat. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's all right, I hear you. I'm coming. Commissioner Weston. Good morning, Cranston. Oh, come in. Say. What are you doing here this hour of the morning? I was investigating a case in this building. Just looked in for some coffee. All right, come into the kitchen. Thanks, sir. What case, Commissioner? Well, it's a strange business, Cranston. There's been a wave of assassinations hit this city that's got me confused. I don't know where I stand. Assassination? I haven't heard about any murders, either. Well, we've been keeping them hushed up. We've found five men murdered in the last two weeks. Each murder looks exactly like suicide. Except for one thing. What? On the palm of each dead man, we found a curious mark. A circle with a small cross under it in some kind of purple ink. Oh, by the way, do you know a Lester Smith from the fifth floor? He's the latest victim. No, I don't. Circle and cross. Oh, where are the cups? Hmm? Oh, in the cupboard over there. Oh, thanks. Almost been driving me to drink. And, uh, where's the milk? Just open the service door there. Those are the morning papers are left outside. Good. Hey, Cranston. What kind of paper do you subscribe to, anyway? The Globe? Why? No, no, not the Globe. This other one. The one printed in purple ink on grey paper. I thought it was an advertising circular at first. Hmm. Grey paper? Let me have a look at that. Yeah, it's lying underneath the globe. <laughs> I've never subscribed to anything like this, Commissioner. Well, I've never seen a paper like that before. Mm-hmm. Seems to recall the room. Exactly. Do you notice the date on top of it? Thirty-third lustrum in the ninth sequence of the sixth epoch. <laughs> what well, that's supposed to mean? <laughs> The turbitality enemy of Arch Ascension Master, the known as Fraser Blackburn, was yesterday aided to new life. Is that English? It's a kind of English. The time futuristic writers claim our descendants will speak in a few centuries. Well, if this isn't the weirdest thing I've ever come across. Just a moment, Commissioner. Huh? Oh, good morning, my dear Mr. Cranston. Oh, good morning. Apparently, you know my name. Why, oh, yes, Mr. Cranston. I like to know my neighbors. My name is Brand. I am very much afraid you have my morning paper there, Mr. Cranston. Is this your paper? Look here, Mr. Brand, what's it all about? We're trying to make sense out of it. <laughs> it's really quite a simple matter. I happen to belong to a lodge. This is our news bulletin. We write in such odd fashion merely to be different. Oh, okay. Hey, well, here's your paper, Mr. Bland, only I don't see how anybody can understand it. Oh, it makes a great deal of sense for those who know how to read it. Good morning, gentlemen. <coughs> Commissioner, did you happen to see inside his flat? No, I was concentrating on the paper. It was weird. From what I could see, the furniture and decorations were something definitely not of this world. Oh, now, Cranston, I tell you, I caught a glimpse of photographs on the wall. Hey, look out, the coffee's boiling. And those photographs could not have been taken anywhere on this earth. Now, forget about it, Cranston. And you heard that music, didn't you? 
But we are an earthly and human music. Oh, it's probably all something to do with these large cranston. Now, don't let your imagination run away with you. There's your phone. All right, all right. Probably the department. They know I'm here. No, go ahead, Commissioner. Hello, this is Weston. What? Not again. All right, I'll be right over there. You want to exercise your imagination on something real, Cranston? Mm hmm. Well, get your clothes on and come with me. There's just been another of those assassinations. Hello, Mr. Where's the body? Right here, sir. All right, let's have a look at it. Uh, just like all the rest. Well, that's it. Seems like a bona fide suicide, doesn't it? Yes, it certainly does, Commissioner. Pistol in the right hand, wound in the right temple. Powder burned in the left hand. Yes, that's it. Commissioner, I believe it was suicide. Well, that's it. 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 Well, I was thinking, uh, perhaps all those other men in Mr. Blackburn here belong to a suicide club or something. Oh, wait a minute. What did you say his name was? Uh, Blackburn. Uh, Fraser Blackburn. Fraser Blackburn. What's all with you? Commissioner, don't you remember? In bland paper this morning? All that mumbo-jumbo ray? Well, what about it? That item about Fraser Blackburn being aided to a new life. Oh, yes, I say that's right. This is something we've got to find out about, Commissioner. Now, 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 wait a minute, Quentin. Now, did only go off to the tangent. That item might have meant that Fraser Blackburn was promoted to a fancy wake in his lawn. Mm -hmm. Perhaps it could, but then again, perhaps it meant murder. But, Lamont, why the hurry? I'm trying to beat Weston to the punch. I want to ask Bland a few questions before Weston sees him. But why did you bring me back with you? First, tell me what you think of my story, Margaret. Oh, it's too fantastic, Lamont. Commissioner Weston was right. You are going off into a tangent. There must be some rational explanation. I hope so. And that's what I'm going to find out. Well, how? I want you to ring Bland's doorbell. When he opens the door, pretend you're looking for me. But you'll be with me. The shadow will be with you, Margot. I'll go into that flat with Bland. You go back to my place and wait for me. Oh, all right, Lamont. This is it. Go ahead. Yes. What is it, please? Oh, oh, excuse me. Is Mr. Cranston here? I'm very sorry. You had the wrong flat. Mr. Cranston lives next door. Oh, oh, thank you. Not at all, my dear. Good morning. It is strange. I have not... <laughs> Who's in here? Who laughed? It is the shadow, Glass. The shadow? Oh, yes, I've heard of you. They say no man can see you. Evidently, that is true. I've been expecting you. What are you doing at that instrument panel? You shall soon see, shadow. We can discuss your visit while my machine operates. Operates? I must have gotten on you, my dear shadow. I cannot permit your invisibility to handicap me. I must know with whom I am dealing. No man knows the shadow. But my machines will. And they will tell me. Listen. Position of subject north 2509. Biometric. Height of subject third group. Weight in second. Collaboration. Anatomic analysis shows you the lateral development to the right. Variation in bone and muscle in proportion of 1 to 1.003. <laughs> Magnificent, eh? In, in another two minutes, we'll have you indexed, x-rayed, and photographed. Inspection subject, human temperature, Fahrenheit 78.6. Ha, 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 
Mont I? I just can't believe all the fantastic things you're implying about Bland. They just can't be. Perhaps, Margot, but don't... Wait. Ah, uh, Mr. Cranston, greetings. May I enter, please? Yes, come on, Bland. We were just talking about you. How very odd. I was just talking about you, Mr. Cranston. I have very bad news for you and the young lady. Our chief is displeased with you. What, what do you mean? Our chief is quite angry. Jupiter, I have never heard him so angry. The young lady should never have brought the shadow into my house. What's that? We know you and the young lady, Miss Blaine, is it not? Our friends of the shadow. Analysis of our historical tabulators has shown you have invariably brought the shadow into cases in which you are involved. Go on. It was a serious mistake so far as we're concerned, Mr. Cranston. We don't like it. Who are you? I see no harm in telling you, in view of what will shortly take place. Listen carefully, my friends, and try to understand. We are not of your world. Where we are from does not matter. We are not of your world. We look human, we play the role of human, but we are not of your breed. You sound like some kind of organization. How many are you? Perhaps three million to date. Yes, we are an organization. A secret one, you might say, but we have discovered the best way to keep a secret is not to have one. We come out into the open, my friends. We live with you and work with you. While you ignore us with frank, smug innocence, we, who appear to be your friends, your brothers, your fellow men, are preparing to take your world away from you. And those assassinations? Ah. You deduced that from our paper, eh? Most unfortunate that it fell into your hands. Unfortunate for you. Yes. As the years pass, too many humans like you begin to ask embarrassing questions. Some we put off with reasonable explanations. Others, like yourself, must be answered more strictly. Like Fraser Blackburn. And you're so sure of yourself that you're warning me. Merely so that you will accept your fate gracefully, my friend. So that you will not put us to the bother of pursuing you. You are surrounded by us. You do not know which of your friends, your enemies, your acquaintances, your neighbors. Maybe one of us. The chief is displeased and instructs me to end your curiosity. That means, as sure as this earth of yours will be ours, you will be dead in one hour. We'll return to the shadow in just a moment. But first, your announcer with a message. And now, back to the shadow. Lamont and Margot have just come out of his apartment building. A taxi is cruising past, and Lamont calls... Taxi? Hey, taxi, over here. Lamont, why are you rushing out of your flat like this? I, I feel like a fugitive. Get in, Margot. That's exactly what you are. 125 Park Road, driver. Yes. I'm taking you home right now. You don't believe that fantastic story Bland told us? I don't want to. But... But you do. Oh, Lamont. I've seen his flat. His fantastic scientific equipment. I'm confused, Margot. I don't know what to believe. What are you going to do? Fight. Millions of men? You may have been lying about that. I don't know. All I know is you don't have to fight an army. You fight its generals. If I can get Bland, we won't have to worry about his organization. How are you going to do it? The first thing is to get you home where you'll be safe. We'll work out a code signal so we can phone each other and be sure to whom we're talking. All right, people. Out you get. So soon? Hey, just a minute. You've made a mistake. There's no mistake. I said 125 Park Road. You've taken us to the middle of the park. And it's starting to rain. I don't want to take a walk in this weather, driver. This isn't any mistake, Mr. Cranston. Get out. Come on. You mean you... That's right. The boss has ordered your execution. So get out. Both of you. You've got two minutes to say goodbye. 
You don't try any tricks. I'm pretty quick with a gun. Come on. What are we going to Take do? Take it easy, Margo. Kelsey on nine to center. Check. Go ahead. Have Cranston in line. Carry out. Operation. Hey, did Bland instruct for Mark on pounds? We'll check. Well, Harry, I'm in the middle of the park. Won't be interrupted. No instructions on Bland. Carry on. Acknowledge. All right, people. Here's where you get it. The lady first. The gentleman first. All right. Pity you got too curious. That's a dangerous decision. Get out of the way, Michael. You'll never get away with it, you fool. I'll get away with a lot more before I finish. Drop that gun. Drop it. Come on, watch out. There's a car coming. Let me get just one punch and then... Hey, Michael, Michael, he's been run down. Quickly, let's get out of here. There may be more of Bland's people. Now run. Lead headquarters now. We'll be safe as now. Yeah, okay. Oh. This is much better. Oh, I'll feel best of all in Commissioner Weston's office. Mr. Cranston! Hey, Mr. Cranston! Hold on. I'm Halliday of the Globe. Don't you live in the building where they found that assassination case this morning? Oh. Well, what about it? Oh, can't you give us some information? Did you know the dead man ever visited him? Know anything about his family? How is he off financially? Now, look here, Halliday. I'm busy right now. Can't just wait until later. Oh, give me a break, Mr. Cranston. You know me from way back. I've got to get some information on this case. Later, I tell you. Come on, Margo. Margo! Margo! Honey, she just vanished in the crowd. It was a trap. You arranged this, you and Bland. Mr. Cranston, what's the matter? I've known you for years, and you turn out to be one of them. Go back to Bland. Tell him I'll find Margo, and I'll find him too. Margo! 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 What in blazes do you... Oh, it's you, Cranston. Has Margot been in here? Mr. Blaine? No. What's up, Cranston? Bland's got hold of her. Bland? You mean that hopeless, focus character? He's something a lot worse than that. Come along, Commissioner. We've got to get to his flat. First, now, for the love of heaven, wait a There's minute. There's a chance Margot may be there. Now, Cranston, Cranston, please don't rush me this way. What on earth has got you so excited? Oh, nothing much. Nothing but kidnapping, mass murder, invasion, death and destruction. Hardly anything at all. Come along, Commissioner. I'll explain on the way to Bland's. Fantastic. Am I supposed to believe your story? Why not? No one really knows what goes on in the world around them. They think they do. They make assumptions. Just because a house looks like a house, they believe ordinary people live in it. But how do they do for sure? Well, here's Bland's flat. Inside quickly. The door's open. Oh, I don't like this. No, neither do I. Hey, hey, hey. This place has been stripped bare. Yeah. Just an empty flat. Bland flown the group. I was afraid of this. I tell you honestly, Cranston, I wouldn't have believed it if I hadn't seen it with my own eyes. All right. Come along, Commissioner. Where to? We've got one last chance of locating Margot and Bland. They're probably at the headquarters. Well, how do we know that? What's your idea? We'll pick up that taxi driver's cab, the one who attacked us in the park. All right, then what? I start driving it across town and drive and compact their headquarters and the car radio. But how is that going to help? If I can keep the taxi and the dialogue going long enough, your police radio direction finders may be able to get a line on the source of their broadcast. It's a long chance, but it's the only way to find Margot. If she's still alive. All right, Cranston. I've got you a police escort. I'm going to let this cab fly out. Rain and all. Direction finders ready? Yep. Go ahead with the radio. Pray for me. I'm too busy worrying about my own skin. These streets are like glass. Chelsea 09 reporting. Reporting on death of Cranston and Lane. Report one hour late. Explanation. Cranston put up a fight. Continue. I got them both. One moment. Chelsea 09 reported killed in car accident one hour ago. Explanation. That's impossible. Margot Lane reported brought to headquarters half an hour ago. Explanation. I tell you, you'll make some... Mr. Cranston, but not quite clear enough. Blast. You'll be interested to know we're going to use Miss Lane as a bargaining point for the shadow. Since she seems to know that elusive person... Bland, listen to me. You'll also be interested to know you forced us out into the open, Mr. Cranston. Your rash interference has precipitated our attack. It will begin very shortly. I am happy to say you will be one of the first victims of your breed. Switched off. Do you 
think the direction people had enough time, Commissioner? Now stop the car. We'll find us from the direction patrol. They're right behind us. Come on. Well, how about this, Tennessee? Any luck? Yes, sir. We veered just enough to make a location, Commissioner. The broadcast seemed to come from a spot on the coast. The old Venus Island Carnival. Venus Island Carnival? Come along, Commissioner. This looks like it. Benson! Benson! Hey, Benson! Over here! Where? Oh, well, did you find anything? No, not yet. You know, this storm's getting worse. It's exposed out here. An empty summer carnival doesn't offer too much car. Wait, Commissioner. Hmm? Well, let's stop this wild goose chase. The direction squad must have miscalculated. Ned, I didn't order the special riot detachment down here. It's not a wild goose chase. You'd better get to a phone and call your patrol cars. Now, what do you mean? Look down towards the shore. That old freak exhibit. The men from Venus. Do you see it? Yes. Yeah. And that mark on the sign, it's a circle with a cross under it. Yes. Yeah. That's the astrological symbol of the planet Venus. It's the mark we found on the palms of those dead men. Send out that call for your cars, Commissioner. This is what we're looking for. You can see fresh tracks in the muddy ground leading into place. All right, you wait here, Clinton. I'll be back in about five minutes. I'm afraid I can't, Commissioner. Because in one minute, Mr. Bland and company is going to receive a visit from the Shadow. This room is our headquarters. The nerve center of our organization. This room wherein now is our brain. Please, Mr. Blair. Oh, it will interest you, I'm sure. Over here are our files, the records of our members, their names, addresses, and achievements. And those switchboards? They are our communication trunks. All over your world, our members are calling in, reporting, receiving new orders, instructions. Second by second, our work goes on in this minute detail. And second by second, the end of your world draws closer, closer, closer. I don't believe it. I won't. That does not matter. It is a fact. It will be. I don't believe you see what you are. From another world, you'll find us criminals masquerading as aliens. And what if we are, Miss Lane? What is the difference? You will lose your earth, and we shall gain it. <laughs> Who's that? We've met before, Bland. A shadow? Yes, my friend. It is the shadow laughing at you. Laughing at the insane grandeur of your plans that will come to nothing. The shadow in here? Impossible. The shadow is here, Bland. There is no secret that can be kept safe from the shadow. No, this, this is impossible. Deep underground in this hideaway, under tons of sand with the naked sea pounding against the walls of your cavern, you hope to bury your secret trade of murder. But the shadow has ferreted you out, Bland. <laughs> the shadow, no. It won't help you. It won't help your breathe. You are trapped, Blan. Listen. Faintly, you can hear the scream of police sirens surrounding the entrance to this place. In minutes, they will descend to ring you out like a sponge. Every secret, every name, every plan. The police? <laughs> no! <laughs> Don't move, Blan. I have moved as far as I need. You see this switch, shadow? Look when with your invisible eyes. There are explosives set in the outer walls that keep back the sea. When those walls are broken, the sea will come in here. You will learn nothing from us, nothing. You would murder all those people or fiends in the other room? Why not? They are merely pawns. I have my own way out of here. And once I am out, I can build another organization. Get away from that switchboard. Too late. I have thrown the switch. Listen. There go the charges in the outer walls. The sea will be in here soon. Oh. Quick, Margo. Out. Take my hand. Yes, Run, Margot, run! You have won for the moment, Shadow. But it is only a delay. We will be back. How you ever got out of that place with Miss Lane is a miracle to me, Cranston. No, not a miracle, Commissioner. But certainly a close call. And you say everything down there was destroyed? Yes. Equipment, records, all those people. Everything is lost in a morass of sand a hundred feet beneath the ocean. Everything but Bland. He said he had a way out. That's all right. We've got men posted all over the... Commissioner, look! Hmm? Over there, someone running. It's Bland. He did get out. Stop him! How soon as he gets him in after him? <laughs> He's down. Come on! This way, Arthur! Well, that's the end of Bland. No matter what he was, he 
died like a man. But Lamont, which was he? A man or, or what he claimed? Margot, I really don't know. We have no way of disproving anything he said. But if he was telling the truth, there are many more like him still on Earth. It doesn't matter. Without leadership, they'll collapse. Just a little vigilance will be enough to keep them in check. But we've got to be vigilant. We've got to walk with care. Act with caution. Death may lurk just around the corner for us. And we'll never know. In a moment, I'll return with further news of the shadow. But first, your announcer. You have been listening to the thrilling adventures of The Shadow. One man's relentless fight against the forces of evil. This feature was devised to demonstrate to old and young alike that crime does not pay. The Shadow was produced by Red Johnston of Grace Gibson Radio Productions, a masterpiece of suspense. <laughs>